Last year, Coinbase came out with a Coinbase debit card, which offers 4% back in crypto rewards. Unfortunately, the website doesn't make available to you what the specifics of the card are until you've been accepted. And with the waitlist that's been in place, that can take some time. Since I was recently accepted, I'm gonna walk you through what the specifics on the card are so you can decide if it's a good fit for you. I'm Bradford of the Pay and Pinterest Guide of Personal Finance. First, make sure you hit that like button so we know to make more videos like it. Now let's jump into the card specifics. Now when you're first accepted to get the card, you're gonna fill out some information about yourself and you're also gonna be given this disclosure which I have on the screen right here. Now the first couple pages are just kind of standard information. It's gonna walk you through, okay, what information is Coinbase allowed to share? What information are they not allowed to share? Can you limit sharing on certain items? Now, but continuing clicking on down here, we're gonna to get to the page that I really care about focusing on first. So kind of the background of the card, it is a prepaid debit card. So you're gonna to have to load funds onto it to be able to spend it. Now, the first things here, it is a zero annual fee. There's no minimums required. You basically, the card is free to use. But coming down here, we're gonna look at the spending money and the getting cash. So this is where it's really important. So while Coinbase does advertise that you can spend your cryptocurrencies using this debit card, you don't wanna do that. And the reason is, is, say you have some Bitcoin and you're trying to spend it when you're going to buy some groceries at Walmart. Every time you have to spend a cryptocurrency that you have, Coinbase has to sell that token, convert it into US dollars, so that way you can actually use it. But when they do that, they're gonna charge this 2.49% transaction fee for you to use the card. Now, yes, while you can still get the 4% back in your crypto rewards, you're really cutting into the rewards that you're using. And if you decide to do that, it's really better just to use a regular cashback card instead. So make sure you're loading just regular dollars or USD coins onto your card because then there is no transaction fee. Now, the same thing applies if you're trying to take money out with an ATM. If you are trying to take money out with one of your cryptocurrencies that you have in your wallet, that 2.49% fee does apply. So make sure you're loading your card with regular dollars or USD tokens. Another thing I wanna mention on here, I scanned through it, there is no ATM reimbursement for you, even though this is a debit card. So just something to be aware about if you are trying to withdraw money, consider using a different debit card that you have so that way you're not having to eat the ATM withdrawal fee. Then continuing down here on this page, it just breaks down. No, you're not gonna pay any additional fees just for using the specific card. One thing I wanna point out is that if you're using this card overseas, while Coinbase does not have a specific extra fee you're gonna pay, you are still gonna be charged a currency conversion fee. So it's just something to be aware about. Even though it does say zero for all these, expect to pay extra just because you're trying to transfer the US dollar into a euro or a pound or whatever the local currency is. And after that, None of this other, other information is really that important. Basically continuing on, it's telling you how you access your funds, how you talk to them, things like that. The next part that is important is this section right here. And it talks to you about how you can actually use your card and what the limitations are. The first thing I wanna point your attention to is that the maximum card balance at any time, because it is a prepaid debit card, is gonna be effectively $10,000, $9,999.99. All right, not too big of a deal. But the other thing I wanna point your attention to is there is a cap on how much you can actually reload your card each day. And that's gonna be $5,000 per 24 hour period. And it breaks that down. What are the other things that aren't capped by the dollar amount in terms of just how many times you can load money onto the card in any 24 hour period. The other thing to look at here is that it does limit the number of times you can withdraw money from an ATM or if you're at the counter trying to withdraw money from the cashier is no more than three times a day and it does limit how much money you're actually able to withdraw with your debit card and caps it out at a thousand dollars per 24 hour period now that's kind of restricting um, and the last thing i want to mention on here which i think is really a big crunch point especially if you're trying to make large purchases to get the most crypto rewards is you can't make any purchases larger than 2500 dollars. and then for any given 24 hour period you are capped out at five thousand dollars for that 24 hour period and then just continuing down here the other things to look at um, talks about ATM fees, how you're basically not gonna be reimbursed, but they're not gonna charge you an extra fee. And really the biggest thing here is it talks through, you can't sue Coinbase by signing up to use this card. You're agreeing that you're gonna use um, arbitration if something happens, basically. Uh, you can't sue them, you have a mediator, and that's how you decide what's going on. That's not anything that's unstandard. That's pretty much how all legal documents are these days. And if that's something you're not aware of, that's just a lesson making sure you're reading the fine print. All right, now let's jump over to the Coinbase website and see what it looks like once you actually have the Coinbase debit card. Sweet, so here's the Coinbase website itself. So once you are approved and you've signed up after you've been removed from the wait list, you're gonna be able to use the e-debit card immediately, but it will take seven to 10 business days to receive the actual plastic card in the mail. 
So the things that really you can adjust here is you can adjust how are you gonna pay with your money? Where are the funds coming from that you're actually funding the debit card from? And it gives you a choice of all these other cryptocurrencies that you can use. Don't choose any of them. That's just giving money away. Use either the US dollar or the USD coin because there is no transaction fee to use those. Past that, all right, it talks about a 4% crypto reward, but how are you actually getting that and what cryptocurrencies are you able to earn that reward on? Great question. I was wondering that until I actually got a proof of the card. I had no idea what they were. So you have eight different cryptocurrencies you're able to choose from. Four receive a 4% crypto reward, and then the other four only receive 1%. So the, the four that receive the, the highest percent back is gonna be Stellar Lumens, The Graph, Amp, and Rally. And then the 1% back are gonna be the board larger names. It's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, and DAI. Don't pick any of these. Pick one of the 4% back, and then if you want to transfer it, because there's not gonna be any sort of fee to transfer it on Coinbase, do it at that point. Get the 4% back and then transfer it over to the Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever you're trying to do. So that way you really are getting 4% cash back on your purchases. And that's really all there is to it, to the actual Coinbase card itself on the website. It's just really choosing how do you wanna pay for the card and then how do you wanna earn your rewards back. All right, so what's the bottom line with the Coinbase debit card? I think it's really cool that you can earn equivalently 4% cash back on your purchases while you use the card. Now, if you're like me and you have a bit of a higher spender, this isn't gonna be a good card for you just because it caps you out at only $2,500 and up to $5,000 a day. And if you do need to be using cash, the very low caps of $1,000 a day for with an ATM withdrawal, that really hurts. Plus you're not getting reimbursed for any of the ATM fees that you're gonna be charged for. So you're much better using just a regular debit card with your bank, which more likely than not, you're gonna be reimbursed for those fees. Now, the pros working for it is if you're just trying to use it to be able to maximize some smaller purchases and you're not gonna be using it for a bunch of larger ticket items, because one, you can't, but if it's just gonna kind of be filling in those extra gaps and trying to maximize by getting the equivalent of 4% cash back in cryptocurrencies, I think that's a great way to use it. But it does definitely require some extra steps because you do have to reload the card continuously. You're not just able to automatically withdraw it from a checking account. And then you have to transfer whatever the 4% is into the cryptocurrencies that you actually wanna be invested in. Now, if that sounds like a little bit too much legwork for you, consider just using a regular cashback card. And we have the best cards of 2022 listed right here. So that way you can be getting at least 2% cash back on all your purchases. I wanna thank you for joining me today. And until next time, just remember to pinch a little.